Hey guys, welcome back to Cypress and Sparrow Homestead. Spring is officially here, and you can probably hear the little chirps. Can you hear the little chirps? We got new chicks and new ducklings. And today I wanna to share with you some of the things that you need to know as a new chick or duckling owner. We got these guys just yesterday from a local spot. We have two black copper morans. We have two starlight olive eggers. We have two call ducks and one magpie duck. We wanted to add these varieties specifically because they are cold hardy varieties and we live in Wisconsin, uh, but also they bring a unique egg color that we don't have with our other chickens. And the ducks, we just love ducks because they're so friendly. The first thing that you need to know as a new duck and chicken owner is you have to have your setup in place for them before you bring them home. Making sure that you have a nice solid container, making sure that you have a good solid heat source, some bedding, food, water, and any other treats that you want. Make sure you have all of that before you bring them home. That way when they come home, they're ready just to go into their new living situation and it won't stress them out, it won't freak them out, and everything will be all good. So because we only have seven birds, we can get by with just a regular kind of storage container that we use here. What we use for a heat source is a lamp. And this is kind of debated if you should use a heat lamp or if you should use some sort of radiant heating or even a heat pad. We like the lamp, it works for us. We keep it nice and secure so we don't run any risk of it falling into the container. Um, but I know that for some people, they don't want to take that risk at all. We feel confident with our setup. One of the pros that a lot of people talk about to radiant heating is it might mimic what a uh, mother ch chicken or a mother duck um, would be like a little bit better than the heat lamp, but if you have a heat lamp or radiant heat, both work just fine. Next, what we like to use for our food and water containers are kind of the basic what you would find at any sort of garden or feed store. They're a down feeding container, so the water flows down when it needs to be filled and same with the food. Um, one thing to note on this, especially if you get ducks, is they love to dirty up the water. So if you have ducks, you have to be a little bit more intentional about changing the water out because otherwise it'll get dirty really fast. The bedding will get kicked up into the water and it just kind of gets gross. So chickens are less messy. Ducks, make sure that you are changing out the water more frequently. One last thing to note is ducks will imprint on you. And what imprint means is they think that you are their mom. So if you don't want them following you around when you're doing yard work, when you're outside, when you are away from them, if you don't want them chirping and squealing or whatever, unfortunately, I would actually probably spend less time with them because the more time you spend with them, the more they're gonna imprint on you. We don't mind it, we think it's super cute when they come running up to us when we come home or whatever and they're outside. And they're just like big fluff balls of joy. But if you don't want that, that's something to keep in mind. The next thing to know is what type of food are you gonna feed them? We like to feed them a regular uh, chicken and duck starter food. So it's got higher amounts of protein. Um, I think it's anywhere from 16% or up is a good protein level for newborn chicks and ducks. We use NatureWise, it's just what we've had on hand. So chickens too, they will need what's called grit, which is a kind of rocky, almost sand-like material. And they eat this along with their food and it just helps break down their food, helps with their digestion. And last thing to note about their kind of housing living situation is we keep our birds inside until they are fully feathered. One, that means that they're gonna be big enough to be outside, um, but two, it means that they're gonna be big enough to be introduced to the flock. You don't want to introduce the baby chicks or the baby ducklings to the flock too early because then that can cause some dominance issues with the new birds and the old birds. So making sure that they're appropriately sized so that they can fit in with the flock but also they're not going to be too cold outside. One other bonus tip when you are introducing them to the old flock, try and put them in the coop at night. That way when they wake up in the morning and they leave the coop, they recognize that spot, that coop as their new home. And so at the end of the day, that's where they're gonna navigate back towards. The next thing to note is to have some basic chicken care knowledge. So just having a baseline of what to look out for, when to know when your chick is probably not feeling its best, um, when to be concerned potentially, if it's not really responding or not really waking up, just having a baseline level of chicken care and like health issues that they might face will go such a long way and to make sure that you have chicks that grow up to be egg producing beautiful chickens. 
So whether you get that knowledge from a book or YouTube or a blog or wherever it is, go in with some knowledge of just some of the major issues that chicks face and you will feel confident and your chicks will thank you if you should ever run into an issue health concerning. Chicks do sleep a ton. So if you see a chick that's got its head down, don't freak out, probably okay. Maybe give it a little nudge and if it pops right up, it's totally fine. But they do sleep a lot, so that is something to know. Another thing to be aware of is just all the practical purposes that a chicken might bring to your homestead. So right now we primarily use ours for eggs and garden gold, AKA their poop. We like to use the manure, we throw it in a compost pile, um, let it sit for a few months, and then we put that onto our garden beds, which help to give it nutrients, help to fix the nitrogen levels in it, and help to grow beautiful, tasty, delicious vegetables. But having a good idea of what purpose you want your chickens to serve on your homestead going in before you get them is gonna be great for when they come time to actually serve that purpose. You'll be locked and loaded, ready to go, know how you want them to produce. A couple other purposes for chickens to have is obviously for meat, if you wanna butcher your own chickens or sell them to a butcher shop. And a little known one is their ability to kind of till up land and, and prep garden spaces. They won't necessarily dig into the ground like a pig or a goat might and really rough up the ground, but they kind of scratch the surface. They get some of the dead weeds and grass or whatever loosened up. Um, and obviously they poop there, so they have that uh, beautiful garden gold. And then you can just go in with a garden rake, kind of rough it up, till it up, spread that stuff all around, and that plot is now good to go for vegetables. But don't put fresh manure on plants, because that'll just kill it. Let it sit, let it dry out, let it work into its natural uh, progression of whatever poop does, and then it'll be garden gold. And last but not least, chicks are addicting. I mean, look at that little face, if you can see it. Chickens are addicting. You are gonna wanna catch them all, kinda like Pokemon. You're gonna wanna grow your flock, you're gonna wanna get all the colorful eggs. That's, you know, everyone always warns you beforehand, before you get chickens, that it's just gonna keep growing, and I'm a person that agrees with that. We started last year with six chickens. We added five more halfway through the summer. Um, and now we're adding four more this year with a couple in our incubator as well. The flock is just gonna keep growing. We have, we'll have six ducks and they're just so much fun. They bring so much joy and kind of humor and just character to the homestead that I don't imagine us not having chickens or ducks at any point while we're here. I think they are the perfect gateway animal to get into animal husbandry and growing or raising your own livestock. And so if you are on the fence about getting chickens and ducks, I hope this video was helpful. I hope that you found some value in it. I hope that you can feed your chicken addiction and we will see you in the next video. Peace.